Hi everybody, welcome to Copper's Fireside Chat. I'm Kira Lenke, I'm on the marketing team here and I am thrilled to be sitting beside four of my stellar colleagues. Um, you're looking at our all-female sales management team here at Copper. So I'll let these wonderful women introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Haley Wickens and I am the manager of the sales development team. Hi, I'm Brittany Perez and I head up the account management team. Hello, I'm Marina Fishman and I oversee the SMB team. And I'm Jessica Fisher and I oversee the Emerging Small Business team. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. So we're just going to spend a few minutes chatting about your careers as sales leaders and what you've learned and how you've progressed and really just what what you're building here at Copper and how you've built this team of relationship makers and how you guys see that world today. So. I have a question for you guys just to kind of kick it off <laughs> that I'm curious to know about and I'm sure our audience um, tuning in will want to know too, which is that we are in a heavily male dominated industry um, given we're in Silicon Valley and we're a SaaS company and you guys have all had careers in SaaS for a long time, all been in sales, so I'm curious to learn from you guys what it's been like navigating that road and how did you end up here as an all-female sales management team. I think one of my um, most clear memories of one of my first jobs in the city, um, I think it was my third month there, and the top male performer on the floor pulls me into a conference room and is like, all right, Brittany, I need some, I need some time with you and offer some advice. Um, you sound like you are a 15-year-old girl on the phone, and I'm not going to buy software for my 15-year-old daughter. So you need to figure out how to hold your presence on the phone um, so they'll respect you. Wow, yeah. fascinating. It was, it was kind of a hit, but it was really motivating to figure out how to sound more dominating on the phone and to take control of those conversations, just like he was on his side too. And so have you had to have conversations with some of the um, women that you manage today? A couple, yes. Yeah, it comes from a good place because I know yeah. how I felt. It wasn't, I felt positive after that conversation, so I yeah. wanted someone to feel the same way after as well that was struggling on the phone. Yeah, yeah. interesting. What about you, Jess? Yeah, for me, I've, um, let's see, I've been in the industry now for seven years. I was at Yelp for five years, and it's been really interesting for me because I actually was managed at Yelp by all women. My director, um, my VP of sales was a woman and I didn't really have that experience of this kind of idea of male dominated leadership. And when I came to Copper, it really did a 180. I walked into my first sales meeting and it was all men. And I thought, okay, well, this is a little bit different than what I'm coming from. Not in a bad way, just very, uh, very different. And so now I, I lead a team of of all men, seven ESB men that are wonderful. But I'll admit that the way that I communicate with them is a little bit different than the way that I've communicated with some of my other you know, managers in the past as well, or reps also. So is the way that you communicate with them like in how you work together and how you're connecting personally to build that bond at work? Yeah, I am who I am as far as a, a leader goes, but I think in that connection that is so important with your reps outside of the office, that's obviously a little bit different than what perhaps you would talk about with, you know, a woman. So to give you an example, I threw a baby shower over the weekend and, you know, not many of them are very interested in hearing the types of balloons that I chose, but um, <laughs> Brittany was. And so that's great. I tap into some of my other, you know, interests as well that really connects me to them yeah. in a different way. So Marina, you've had a baby at Copper, yes. which is amazing. He'll be um, one next month. <laughs> congratulations. So what was that experience like for you with, speaking of baby showers, having one here and just raising a baby while being a sales leader? Yeah, the baby shower was amazing. My good friends threw it for me. So it was very humbling to know that you know, people really care, and um, I was surprised to see the turnout. Some of our top uh, sales uh, execs showed up and um, gave me a present and gave me, you know, just <laughs> gave me their blessing. So that was really great. They took time off the floor to be there for me. So that was very touching. And uh, just generally speaking, you know, definitely a different approach to sales when you have a child to raise. Mm -hmm. um, but it kind of gives you more drive and something that motivates you more than 
like you can feel prior to having a kid. So um, I think it was definitely a great experience and also one that definitely reinforced the fact that I really want to focus on my career. Yeah. And, um, you know, Copper has really given me the opportunity to do both, be a mom and a sales leader. Um, that's really incredible. That's awesome. Haley, how about you? Uh, well, coming to Copper um, just about three years ago, I was the only woman on the sales floor. Uh, so that was interesting. And um, our director was a male, VP was a male, our first manager was a male, and I had to kind of climb my way up and work really hard. Um, and then when Jess was brought in a couple of years ago, that started to pave the road for, for more women in leadership. Um, so thank you, Jess. You're welcome. <laughs> Happy to help. And now, uh, the, you know, the tables have definitely turned. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it is so incredible. I mean, I've never heard of a company that has for like a 100% female sales-led team. It's something I'm very proud of. Yeah, and sure. I feel like my Jess is probably like an external hire, but uh, the three of us, I feel, worked you know, our way up into this role. It was certainly a performance-based accomplishment, so it was pretty cool to see us you know, kind of rise to the top among very competitive male performers. Yeah, that's incredible. Congrats to you all. That's Thank very, you. that's very cool. <laughs> Okay, so one of my questions for you ladies is, you know, I know that at Copper, we're, and, and just in general, not just at Copper, but the world has changed. It's not just a one-to-one -one sale anymore. It's mm -hmm. not just a transaction. You're building a real relationship. And so how do you guys approach that at Copper and how have you worked together? How do your teams work together to build that one kind of long-lasting, cohesive customer relationship? Well, luckily, we use copper, so the transparency <laughs> and the Shameless visibility. Plug. Yeah. Shameless plug. <laughs> the transparency and visibility is there as the relationship um, progresses from team to team, um, and they start with me. So, not me personally, uh, <laughs> but my team, and my team really goes into it with um, empathy. So they are typically talking to people who are struggling with their relationships, and they're trying to make their relationship stronger. So that kind of starts with our team. And then we pass it along to the team that um, its vertical goes into. I think what we've been very, very focused on um, since I've been here is making sure that the customer and their experience comes first. And so it's a very cohesive uh, interaction with the company through the SDRs into actual sales teams that are doing the selling. And though there may be some things behind closed doors, it may be perhaps a little crazy um, in a good way, but ultimately they're having a very streamlined experience, which has always been super, super important to us. Yeah, and for uh, for the SMB team, you know, we definitely focus on a more consultative approach, you know, really trying to uh, establish, you know, what their business model is like, what kind of needs they have, and really, you know, determining first and foremost if we can be a good solution fit. And, um, you know, once that is established, that is, you know, obviously giving the customer the best possible service. When we do the handoff to our customer success team, you know, it's one that we, you know, want to have the best approach with. Um, so it's always important to do a smooth handoff, to set proper expectations, you know, kind of keep each other in the loop so that the customer ultimately does have the best possible experience. The best manager that I ever had, Kyle Ferraro, <laughs> um, the most important thing he told me was that customer service should always come first with the relationships. And I think that when I was offered the opportunity to take over the account management team, uh, it made a lot of sense because I've, I've always approached it that way too. So the, the entire three years I've worked here, it's always been offering my time, my support to make sure that they get um, set up the right way. Yeah, I'll add something to that as well. I think that something that really enhances our ability to cultivate these relationships is that um, Copper allows us to be on the same page yeah. all the way through. So yeah. we understand what um, you know, our sales development reps have given us without having to go back and redo all these questions and kind of the relationship management questions and so um, they feel like they're getting a very customized approach from all of us yeah that's incredible yeah, yeah. and how has that what does that mean does that message like resonate throughout the company or with does your team understand that that might be different than how it was 10 years ago in sales oh well <laughs> yes well I, a lot of the folks that I manage at the moment this is 
uh, either their first or second sales roles. And I think what's important is not even 10 years, five years ago, yeah, it was really different ago, because totally. we used, or I used Salesforce in the past and um, you know, it's a bit clunky and the information that should be plugged in there isn't necessarily mm -hmm. plugged in there. And so it doesn't make for a streamlined um, progression for, for the client and relationship for the client. And so what I don't think they take for granted because I remind them that this is not how it's always been is how easy it really is to maintain this relationship within Copper and make sure that they can easily use it and the handoff is simple and you know the, uh, the customer experience is solid because it's customized to them. My team could be taking over an account anywhere from three months after sign up all the way into two, three years. So we need all of that context. And when we call a client, we don't want to just call and ask for business. We want to have a growth plan in place, yeah. proactive suggestions. And a lot of that comes from looking into our own system and looking for the notes when they talk to Haley's team in the very beginning. So it works really well. And they're impressed that we remember that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, they're like, oh yeah. my gosh, you remember stars. this yeah. conversation we had point. two years ago. Yeah. This is wonderful. And that's fun for your teams too to be able to say, hey, we drink our own champagne. I'm going into the system and doing these exact same things that I'm recommending to you. So it's like a live example. Yep, and when our reps are demoing, they just truly speak about their experience using Copper. Yeah. And I think that you like feel the passion that we have. It just translates over the phone and that's what kind of makes us stand out against the competition yeah so then when you guys are speaking of competition when you guys are hiring the right team mm -hmm. of people to create this relationship experience what are the qualities that you look for when you're hiring integrity for sure yeah because that is one. directly important relating to our client experience yeah. I was talking to one of our newest reps, Matt Carrera, and he asked what, why he, we hired him. <laughs> and I told him that it was his awesome eye contact and the fact that our conversation never broke. It was always natural, and I knew that he would just kill rapport, which he's doing right now. And I'm sure you can agree, that's obviously setting the, the pace for everything with yeah. your team, too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and a lot of the account executives for SMB and ESB start as an SDR. And some of the things that we look for are definitely integrity, a self-starter, the ability to hold a really solid conversation and not sound like a 15-year-old. Yeah. Super important. <laughs> Even yeah. if it is some of their you know, first jobs out of school, it's really yeah. important to yeah. um, you know, be able to hold a conversation. Yeah. yeah. We hire really hungry people mm -hmm. and folks that want to help us bring this company to the next level in our goals. And Something that I used to hire for that I don't have to hire for as much here is, it sounds like a plug, but it is the fact that they don't have to be able to use Salesforce, right? So yeah. working in previous companies, I would always ask the question, have you used Salesforce? Do you understand the way that it works? Um, that's gonna lessen my time to get you up and running. We can really just focus on the selling and making sure that you can hit your numbers. That's just not an issue here. Um, they get up and running pretty quickly. It feels like Google, um, acts like Google, and I can really focus on some of the other kind of intangibles that we look for. Yeah. Integrity, hungry, go-getter, mm -hmm. self-starter, yeah, um, you know, all those yeah. important so qualities. For your career progression from, let's say, an SDR, entry-level sales, to a sales manager today, what are some of the qualities that you've adopted or had to change to, you know, fit with this new wave of where sales is really going with these long-lasting customer relationships? I think the first thing that I noticed about myself when I got promoted was that decisions that I make don't only affect me, they affect every other department in the company. So before converting someone to an annual subscription and changing their price, you have to make sure that it wouldn't hit someone else on the CS team or yeah. onboarding team. So just really realizing the depth of your decisions and who they affect, not just you you're not just a, a sole provider anymore. Yeah, it's a whole team effort yep. to work together yeah. on Domino one. Effect. Yeah, yeah, that's a really important point. I would say probably as an individual contributor, you know, if there is an announcement that's made and maybe it kind of adversely impacts uh, myself as an individual contributor, you know, I might speak up about that and <laughs> may kind of spread some negativity around. <laughs> And that's just natural behaviors, especially with close friends that you've done the job for so long together and it's natural to kind of want to kind of, you know, to vent. But as 
a manager. You have to be very cautious of what you say and do, and ultimately you have to support the decisions that the company is making. And yeah. you know, if there's any hesitancy on that, people feel that, and then it starts to kind of break apart the whole kind of um, you know unit that we have. So uh, I think that's an immediate thing I noticed about myself that kind of made me be a little bit more. Um, polished when it came to taking feedback and um, more importantly how I then uh, relay the feedback to my team. Yeah. And just to build off of what Marina said, as an individual contributor you're constantly receiving the messages from your higher up of what you're supposed to be doing, what you shouldn't be doing, and the minute that you make that transition you are ultra aware of what you say, how you say it. You're always on a stage and they're always watching you for how to react or how to move forward with certain um, changes within the organization. And so kind of looping that back to the relationship management side of things, I mean, you really have to appeal to emotions and just making sure that they feel that they're taken care of and that the company has their best interest in mind. And that's not an easy thing to do. I think that you get better at it as you're in management longer, um, but it's definitely the key change that I had moving from rep to manager five years ago. Yeah, that totally makes sense. How do you guys teach empathy, like for customers? How do you like get, how do you get people to, I mean, sa <laughs> but sales, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but sales people, generally speaking, are highly motivated by hitting their number and mm -hmm. hitting quota and getting those accelerators. So when, you guys keep talking about building this amazing customer experience and working with all these other teams to do that. How do you get your reps to also focus on that over like me, me, what's my number? Did I hit, am I on the top of the leaderboard? You know, some of the emotions that you were kind of referring to, how do you balance that in an organization like this? All eyes on you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that for a lot of our reps, from SDRs all the way up to account managers, they've all struggled with a tool that they've used. And so it's honing in on that and sh even sharing that experience um, when they are building a relationship. So if they're speaking to a potential customer, um, they have to sort of start at that baseline of understanding where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. And so we coach around that a lot in one-on-ones, um, role play, in, in group meetings of, of like understanding that when you've struggled with a tool, the people that you're on the phone with or you're demoing or you're sitting in a conference room with have also struggled with the tool and that tool is probably right now. And so we want to help that relationship um, by giving them the tools that they need. Do you guys put any um, rules in place around like certain behaviors and like if you do this, you're not getting X, like just to control that or? I think it's more of when you notice somebody that perhaps is going a little off track with their conversation, being able to talk to that individual in the moment and say, let's just grab a room really quickly. Let's just go talk about the conversation that you just had. Usually they're pretty frustrated. I find that when folks get a little off track with uh, customers, it's usually because they're upset with them because they can't get the reaction they want out of yeah. them or perhaps they don't understand it. Um, so we usually grab them, go into a room, kind of hash out the conversation and say, okay, now that we've got that all out, let's talk about another way that we can approach the conversation and to make sure that you're actually you know, coming off in a really good way to that customer, regardless of how frustrated you might feel. Yeah. When our director of sales enablement, Kyle, um, had the, the concept of account management, um, he made it clear that his first move was to hire people that have the utmost integrity because they aren't just a prospect, they're our customers. And so that relationship has already been cemented and we want to keep that going. So it's kind of like on the other end for us. Like we want to make sure we maintain that good care um, and that nurturing. Yeah. Yeah, it totally makes sense. And with prospective clients, I think it's just important to put yourself in their position. And, you know, sometimes, yes, they're not giving you what you want, but then you have to stop and think, you know, what is that hesitancy? So it is our job to make them feel comfortable to open up to us and kind of go at their pace. And that's, you know, something that you learn over time. Um, the more seasoned people, they have that kind of naturally, and then the newer folks are starting to pick that up. So it is a process, but it makes sense that they aren't a little reluctant in the beginning to offer up information, you know, that we need, but 
they have their guards up until we've proven that we can be trusted and we have their best interest in mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah that totally makes sense. All right, so last question for you guys. Um, I could just chat with you all day long about this stuff, but I know you have to go actually manage a team now. <laughs> so my last question is just in you for working together and building and nurturing this team and having fun winning together, what is your secret sauce in doing that and building the relationships between each other and to building a cohesive sales team? I think that much like when you hire four people at once and you're sort of hiring for different personality types, um, we sort of all balance each other out. So we all have specific personality types that balance each other and we can all rely on each other for advice, uh, for help, mm -hmm. um, for coverage, and that's really amazing. Yep, and we spoke on integrity and we spoke about uh, being consultative and I think that transpires among us that we are very, you know, respect one another, you know, we take each other's, um, you know, feedback very seriously and just like we treat our customers, we treat each other in the same way. I haven't had this before, just working so well and so cohesively with a group of women. I think that really shows with how well our teams unite, too. I mean, a sales team and organization really is only as good as the relationships that the leaders have with each other. Reps will pick up on any animosity yep. that are, that's happening between leaders. And I think the reason why we've been so successful, and I've worked with Haley, over a little, around two years now is she is brutally honest with me um, <laughs> and I so appreciate it because otherwise you don't necessarily realize that you're doing something wrong so we really do hold each other accountable and that fear of going up to another leader and saying hey you know I, I think maybe you could do this a little bit differently we suggest this you should be aware of that well, in the end of that's the day important. it builds trust yeah, right exactly. that's how you know that she's you know she's investing in you she trusts in yeah. you yeah. We have each other's backs. For sure. <laughs> Very true. Very true. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much for spending the time to chat. You really appreciate it. Awesome. I so enjoyed this. I hope our fireside chat watchers do as well. So if you're interested in more of this type of content, go to copper.com slash blog and you can find um, more of these fireside chats available. So thank you, Haley, Brittany, Marina, and Jess. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Cheers.